Welcome back to Stock Labs for another market recap. We're almost done with March now. So first quarter is kind of getting close to being finished. You know, we're coming up on the last week. Um, and this past week, the market kind of did okay. I mean, it was like uh, we had the Fed meeting where they raised 25 basis points. Basically, it kind of gave the same sort of messaging. You know, the fight against inflation is not done, yada, yada, and that sort of talk. Um, you know, the path for rate hikes, I think the Fed is, I mean, it seems a little out of sync with, the, or not that the Fed is out of sync, but the market expectations now are something for maybe one more 25 basis point rate hike, and then they expect the Fed to just start cutting rates into the end of the year, second half of the year. Fed has not suggested at all that they are prepared or ready to start cutting rates or, you know, they're not planning on raising inflation targets or anything like that. So, I mean, it's kind of curious that the market is kind of set on that. Um, you know, on the day the Fed raised rates and they had their talk, market kind of dumped out from the highs. Then it spent Thursday, Friday kind of dipping, but also kind of clawing its way back. And it closed decently on the on the week, on Friday. Um, as far as what the indices did overall for the week, Qs were up 1.8%. S&P was up 1.5%. The Dow was up 1%. And IWM kind of flat, up 3 tenths. Bond market was perfectly flat, down one basis point. Gold also flat, and uh, crude oil had a bounce up four percent. So, um, yeah, I mean, indices basically they were moving higher. Then after the Fed, they dumped out, and then at the end of the week, they kind of just maintained where they were. They didn't, you know, they didn't give up any more ground. They just uh, sort of chopped around. And didn't unravel. So which, that's just kind of a good thing. Um, from our leadership stocks, they all did pretty well. We had some, okay, Netflix was a big gainer, up 8%. Tesla was up 6 Meta up 5 Meta up over 200 a share. Uh, this is like up over, you know, well over 100%, plus 100% off the lows from, in the last year. NVIDIA a 4% uh, leader for the year, up 80%, 80 plus percent. Uh, Microsoft and Amazon kind of underperformed the NASDAQ and they're kind of the laggards. Okay, Netflix is on, Netflix is the laggard, but they're on the lower end of performance-wise out of this group. So they're kind of uh, still deciding, I guess, what, what they're going to do. But yeah, pretty strong week, up 4%. I mean, this this beat the NASDAQ. NASDAQ was less than 2%. So these like uh, mega, mega, mega caps, they're taking all the money. Uh, you know, this is where people are stuffing stuffing their uh, investment dollars at this point. Um, if we look at breadth by industry, kind of mixed, but on the skews positive. So tech... Only up seven tenths. Again, NASDAQ was strong, but tech overall is not participating that much. You know, it's really just those gigantic companies that are that are the ones pulling the NASDAQ higher. The broader tech space has been, I mean, it was positive this week, but you see a big deviation between the median tech stock and the, the NASDAQ itself. Utilities got hit down 1%. Healthcare got hit down 1%. Industrials up 1%. Services and financials kind of flattish. Financials, the action over there has kind of cooled off a little bit. I mean, from not cooled off, the ranges have been pretty big, but the overall direction has kind of flattened out uh, since the SVB blow up and the uh, First Republic drama along with all the other regional banks. I mean, even Schwab is getting caught up in the mix and all this stuff like that. So a lot of action in the financials, but overall they, they didn't go anywhere this week. I mean, they, they eked out some small gains. Consumer up 
eight tenths. Basic materials also up eight tenths. Um, yeah, so you're not seeing, okay, aside from industrials, industrials actually only one that the median industrial kind of kept up with the indices. S&P was up one and a half, and the median industrial up 1.2. The rest, all of the breadth, uh, you know, they all underperform the indices, basically. So the median stocks in the market are not participating in the rally that we have going on. Um, at least now these last couple of weeks. So um, as far as subsectors and performance, you can see here the the breadth is thin. There's not anything hardly up 5%, only movie theaters, okay? And on the downside, got, okay, also not that much. So we got drugstores, department stores, they were down over 5%, the rest, they kind of head toward the head toward the flat side. So it was like a mildly, it was like a mildly positive week from a breadth perspective. But the, uh, when you consider it against what the median stock is doing against the indices, it's not great. You know the the market is the overall market is underperforming the indices. If that makes sense. I mean the the flows are going to only those gigantic stocks which is makes it kind of easy but it's also kind of unfortunate for a lot of stock pickers um if we look at breadth from a market cap standpoint okay up half a percent for one to five billion five to ten billion it's up 1.2 percent which is pretty solid that's better than what the, you know, what the Russell did. Uh, 10 to 50 billion, up 96 basis points. 50 to 100 billion, up 85 basis points. So you can see even these, you know, if we look at all these stocks, they're un, they're not tracking with the, the indices. You know, they're not keeping up. And Terra Caps over 100 billion market cap, up 1.65 percent. So this beat the, you know. Here we go. This beat the S&P and almost kept up with the Qs. Qs were 1.8%. S&P was 1.5. So, you know, 100 billion cap range is where where people are doing buying. That's the only place where, where that's happening. So just something to keep in mind if you're uh, doing some stock picking. The very large stocks are the ones that are in fashion right now. Um, if we look at the intelligence for this coming week, we've got, okay, blockchain. Uh, I don't know if this is blockchain really. I don't know if this is blockchain miners and stuff or what, but blockchain bullish, short Brazil, Home builders, um, home builders bullish. Mid caps bullish. So maybe that will help to rectify the breadth situation a little bit. Um, oil and gas, shipping, and okay, IWM bearish, which would kind of hurt the uh, breadth metrics you would expect. And I don't know what this is, some random thing. On the downside, we have China bearish. Uh, again, China bearish. Natural gas bearish. Commodities bearish. VIX bearish. Discretionary bearish, <laughs> more VIX bearish, Bitcoin bearish, banks bearish. So, okay, there's this decent, uh, I mean, there aren't a lot of sectors on here, but we have some things to choose from. Looks like commodities, uh, commodities, banks, consumer discretionary bearish. You know, I mean, that's kind of uh, Amazon type stuff, retailers. 
and Bitcoin bearish. So, I mean, we'll see. I mean, it could just be, but VIX also being bearish kind of means that the ranges in the market at the index level are going to tighten up. So maybe we don't expect the indices to travel much this week, but, you know, we shouldn't be expecting kind of an extension of the gains either. So we'll just have to see how that plays out. But yeah, overall, um, you know, market did well Thursday, Friday to not fall apart after the, after the reversal on the Fed. So we'll see if investors are going to just keep buying or if they, or if that was kind of just a like end of the week kind of window dressing action and they're going to go back to selling based on what the Fed said on Wednesday. So we'll see, but most likely being on top of the end of the month, it's kind of like prime time for just chopping around, burning up options, premium, and uh, not doing a whole lot. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes this week. But, yeah, expectation is for not really anything that exciting. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, talk to you guys next week. Bye.